Welcome back to day two in this mini series where we're building a four by three summer house over in Redden. Before we get into what's gonna go on today, let's recap over yesterday. So the first thing we did is we got the foundation bearers set out. This is on a ground screw base. We put a vapor barrier on the bottom side. We got our half pieces located. We got our cutout pieces located. We managed to get the building halfway up and then we managed to get the walls plumb and then get the rest of the building up to exactly where we are at now. Ben's set up the top pieces. We've got the gable pieces. This has got a flat roof going on it. If you have a little look around the side here, you can already see the slope of the roof starting to be in, well, be put in. It's only a shallow pitch, which is all you need with a pent roof. Slight fall, water runs off to the back. We've got EPDM rubber going on this, which will have PVC trims and guttering, and the ceiling's being insulated internally, as is the floor. So we've just had our cup of tea. Ben's got it all set up. Let's get some mallets out and start screwing these logs down and get the roof joists in. There's supposed to be holes there where these joists will get put up there and usually then they just go and it's done. We can start roof boarding. In this instance, obviously we can't because someone either took a day off or just didn't feel in the mood for using saws, which means I've now got to. Let's talk through how we're going to solve it around there and let's sort through it. I have already done one, so I end up looking like I know what I'm talking about. Hopefully I do. Cladding boards, 11 mil. They are being, if you saw the roof joist down there, there's cubes that have been fixed to the side. And what they are for is we want to fix our cladding underneath to those, trim it off internally, and our insulation goes above with an air gap. So, they are 70 mil wide. We need to make sure we leave a little bit of wiggle room on these. If I go over it, Little pencil mark, again, I've left myself a few mil. Get rid of that. Ruler, cool tool to have in your pocket. So I know we are 70 mil wide, so let's put a little pencil mark, 70 mil. And then what I'm gonna do is come back five mil, because I don't know whether you noticed, but on the roof joists, it comes in five mil. And that is where my cut line is going to be. And then I'm going to come down the full depth of the joist, which is 210 mil, and do something somebody else was supposed to do. So let's get that solved so we can move on. With the roof joist holes, they're not holes are they? They're more like grooves. With the roof joist grooves cut out and the floor down and complete, we are now ready to start putting the roof joists in or purlins, however you want to call them. I call them purlins, sometimes I call them roof joists. They're the things that carry the roof boards. So we're gonna get them chucked in. And while Ben is boarding the roof, me and you guys are gonna go and start putting the architraves on the windows and the doors so we can have them in. I actually think tomorrow's going to be a pretty short day, so I might even chuck today and tomorrow into one. 
or I might just do, I might tease you a little bit and just give you number two and then number three. So make sure you hit the like button and make sure you have subscribed, otherwise you are going to miss it. Let's get his roof towards Tim. It means it's going to be a long night tomorrow. Now Ben's finished boarding the roof, what I like to do is, when you look down the very front of the building, I like it to be lovely crisp and straight, because there's nothing worse walking up your garden path and you can just see a fascia board that was wonky in it. So what I like to do, we've got a predetermined 300mm overhang on the drawing, so what I like to do is just come back, 10mm, Little pencil mark at this end. A little pencil mark at this end at 10 mil. Same at the back. Ten mil. Get rid of the tape. And I'll get a chalk line. If you don't go 10 mil and you go less, the end of your chalk line will just ping off. So. Chalk line on. We'll go from this side. So. Short line on. Over we go. Put it nice and tight, not too tight that you snap it. On your pencil mark, reach over, hit your line, little ping. Wind it in. And Ben's going to get that cut for us, and it will look lovely and straight. Right, so now that we've, say we, now that Ben has cut the front and the back edge with the circular saw, get them lovely and straight, it's time to put our roof edge support on, which consists of three by two. Just remember to use something that's appropriately sized because you've got poly top nails that go through your PVC trims. And what you don't want is them to pop out the back. So three by two is perfect for this. We're gonna zip these in with uh, TX20 screws, 40 mil long, 20 mil roof board, 20 mil bike, sink and five mil, you'll be absolutely fine. So let's get the roof edge support screwed on and then we can think about clearing the roof off ready for the rubber. Now that you've cleared your roof, it's also a very good time and opportunity to check that you've got no proud fixings like we've got here. Things like that, when you go to put your rubber on the roof, as you're adjusting it and getting it, you know, central or fair overhang the whole way round, just a slight tug could catch on the tip of one of these nails and you could tear your rubber. And that's a very costly, very costly mistake to make. So make sure that you've got a hammer to hand, get rid of all of these and you check it all because they won't honour a replacement rubber if you've torn it yourself. So I actually did say that we're going to get the windows in. And I want to get them in today. So let's run through exactly how I do these. First things first, these cube timbers here. Any water, if you get driving rain, comes at your architraves. It can get between this gap here. And if it can get between there, it can get between here and it can come through the other side and you end up with water in grass. So what I like to do, get some silicon. Don't have to be too choosy on it, just as long as it's, uh, waterproofing and I've run a bead of sealant down all of these all the way around and that ensures 
but you get no water coming in. Your windows. Not that many people are going to be living in these. This is just a, an outdoor room, but you still want it to be dry, don't you? Get them sealed up. That's that. And let's talk carpet trays. I like to make sure all of my screws match horizontally on all of the builds I do. There is an angle at the bottom of these fascias and it is personal preference which way about these go. My personal preference is not that. It's that way around with the angles on the outside. So the water runs down here, comes to here and drips off. Let's get them screwed in. Screws. Using some fifties here. Torque 20. Put them on there. Make sure this one here is flush with the top. Get a good squeeze on that silicone. And make sure you send them slightly past the surface. What we're going to go for four screws in this one. Make sure they're pulled in nice and tight. We're going to go for number three here. Number four, part of the bottom. And then when you get your second one on the side, I'll line that up with that one. Little pencil. Little pencil mark where I think the screw's going to be, or where I want it to be. Screw that on there. Screw that. Mark that there. Come around. Line it up again. Just remember that timber is a natural thing, so you might get a little bit of a, a bow. That's no drama, because you can pull most of them out with your hand. Get your bottom architrave screwed in. And then get your architrave for your next window, which is gonna be on the same line. Bring that over, put them on there. And this is where, when I said to you, I like it all to be the same in a horizontal line. I'm going to copy my pencil marks on both sides so that when you look at the windows, yes, you're going to see exposed screws unless you want to fill them. We've got a knot here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come slightly down. No choice. Pencil mark there, pencil mark there, and they are ready to be put on the other window. With those done, it is time to go and get them chucked in the building. You'll notice I haven't put a top architrave on these and that is purely because there's one full length piece that goes all the way across the windows and the doors. And we'll cover that in a minute. But firstly, let's go and chuck one in. Handy that was, wasn't it? So what I'll do at this point I'm just going to put a temporary screw in just so it doesn't need to be held and I'm going to go and get the spirit level and make sure that it's plumb. So we need to come this way at the bottom. Window two. Same again, temporary screw. Need that. Check it for plumb. So we're pretty golden there. Maybe a little bit of that. Zip that in. Now it's time for the door frame. Ah, 
and she's ready. Get this back in where it belongs. So you need to have super duper long arms. We're gonna to have to cut this floor out here because in order for us to get this timber that's on the side flush with the logs, this door needs to be up and in, but it can't be. So we're gonna to have to cut off all the way down here, which we kind of knew anyway, but we forgot about. So we'll get that cut and then we can get some doors on. With that done, safety sunglasses off. We can put this in exactly how it was intended. The top will line up, which it does. Obviously we'll make sure it's perfect, but screw them in, or one of them in. Little check for plumb. Are you plumb? No, you're too big for the spirit level. That could do with just a little knock over at the top or at the bottom. Take it. In you go. I don't know whether you noticed there, but what that actually did, it pulled all these in tight. And when it comes time to putting the other architraves on the other side, it'll pull it even tighter. So that's all cool, in and solid. Shut the doors on so we've got a sealed room for the night. In goes door number one. Bit fiddly, but there is a knack to it. In that goes, door locks on. That's one. A good thing to note at this point is make sure your door and handle, door handle, is outside with you. Otherwise, you'd be in a little bit of trouble. See if they're shut. A little bit of adjustment and they'll be there, which we always do at the end, but we are gonna have to actually do it now so that they're shut for the night. And that brings part two to a conclusion. We've still got so many more important elements to not only this, but potentially your own summer house build that are critical, including internal architraves, internal window handles. You wouldn't want them on the outside, would you? Fascia boards. We've got the internal cladding, uh, ceiling to be done. And most importantly, the thing that keeps this whole building watertight, the rubber roof. So more importantly, make sure you subscribe for that. And when you do subscribe, make sure you hit preferences all. The way you do that is when you hit the subscribe button, it will come up saying all, personalized and none. And what you wanna do is press all, that way you'll be notified when part three of this mini series comes out. I'll see you all in part three. Really?